So in order to show that this does have a point of inflection, we're going to need to do our first derivative to show that the same point isn't a maximum or minimum. So we start with our first derivative here. We can factor out a 4x squared. So we get x equals 0 and x equals 3. And Plugging in numbers here. I think this is this the same one that we had before? Yeah. Same equation. So we already have done this already, and we've seen that these are our results from our first derivative. Okay? Now, when we take the second derivative, and from taking the second derivative, even though I factored it here, can you see it's much easier to do the derivative from the first part? Okay? But that's something you're gonna always look at. Maybe there's times that doing a little bit of simplification will make sec your second derivative easier. Sometimes it won't. So for this one, I will use my one here. Originally, I'll just go from that one to that one. 12x squared minus 24x. And so I've got 12x that I can factor out. x equals 0 and x equals 2. Now, at both of these points, okay, neither at 0 nor at 2 do we have a local max or a local min. Our only minimum is at 3, a local minimum at 3. In fact, we already know that 0, because it didn't change sign, was a stationary point of inflection from before. So now, it makes sense that 0 would show up, because we knew it was an inflection point. But now, when we put 0, and 2 on here, we'll find out that if you plug in something less than 0, like a negative 5, negative times a negative will be positive. This is happiness. Then from 0 to 1, you will get a negative. And above 2, you'll get positive again. So as far as the statement, show that it has uh, inflection point here. Here you could say since f double prime of x is less than 0 before 2 and f double prime of x is greater than 0 after 2, after x equals 2, we know Two comma, and if we want to find out what the actual point is, anytime you want to find an actual point, where are you going to plug that into? The original function. So if we wanted to find out what that actual point is, we plug it into here. It's going to give us 16 minus 32, which is negative 16. 2 negative 16. And so we know that 2 negative 16 is... an inflection point. Let's just graph this with everything that we knew from before. Uh, the zero point was at zero, zero, right? We also found out last time that it had another x-intercept at four, zero, and we had the point down here at three, was it negative 27? negative 27, and now we can add to it 2, negative 16. Okay. We know that it's going to be concave up here. You know that it's going to be concave down here, concave up after this. I would probably even try to get this part even flatter in there. That, oh, that looks really pretty. 
I'm happy with that. This is going to, oh, that might even go viral. No. So now we can add that one more point onto our graph, and we've got a really, really accurate sketch of what's happening with our graph. 